Hello everyone, it's me again, Steve Doja here, back some more Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, and this time we have a fully translated version of the pages of the power versus speed with Broly and Hits. I'm going to go through it as quick as I can, but I'm still going to try and explain things because that's very important. So yeah, overwhelming power and explosion of instinct. And the translation is from Shonen the Games Ryu. Um, I don't know how you pronounce it. I'm going to call him Ryu, or you're Ryu now. And power section. Release immense firepower from these massive warriors. So yeah, power, again, these all of the people involved in this are power-type characters, including, obviously, Ultra Trunks, Broly, Nappa, Turpo, and Master Roshi, I assume, alongside Chaos. So these are all power-type characters. We know this now. And uh, in exchange for severely burning through your energy with key attacks and movements, you will higher offensive power and destructive special attacks. Now, I wonder if that means Vegeta's a power-type character, because Vegeta and Goku were both teased as power and speed types or something along those lines in the last V-Jump magazine cover. And I think Vegeta kind of fits the description of someone who burns through the energy to receive, to get damage buffs, right? Um, but we have Nappa, and I think specifically they're talking about his move here, because as he can enhance his attacks with two skills, his special attack delivers a massive damage on, delivers massive damage on a successful hit. And I'm guessing this is the, uh, you know, Volcano Explosion, Giant Storm, the one where he puts his two fingers up, and, uh, you know, big, big, uh, big fires happen. So, um, yeah, Nappa can buff himself, apparently. Or at least his moves receive, like, an extra benefit. If it, like, connects onto a player rather than just hitting the environment. And then there's also Super Saiyan Broly at full power. Obviously, this is his gigantic raw move, because the whole screen is on fire. And you can see there's a beam coming out of his mouth. Which I think is pretty damn cool and a good indicator. But obviously, again, this is gigantic raw. And it says his destructive firepower and wide range attacks... He's the ultimate fighter that can leverage his skill to get behind his opponents. Um, obviously, I think they mean, like, get through his opponents, because Broly isn't, like, nothing personnel kid. You know, he's, he's kind of a monster. He's not like a speed demon. And this is the power section still. So when I say get through, I think it really means it just break through, to be more honest. Um, then we have a bit on Topo. Uh, it says, strike a pose and power up. He's a hot blooded warrior from Universe 11. So, yeah, this is just a tornado, and like what I said earlier... I believe that this is Topo's attack, not uh, Berta's. Just because it's a tornado doesn't mean it's Berta's. We already know Topo has that uh, that move where he grabs you with his feet and spins around and throws you, which is weird, but he has it. Um, then we have Master Roshi, who excels in smash attacks by using his skill, and he can temporarily enhance his attacks and his defense. Now, this is obviously with his like max power mode, or with his like buff form. That so. Yeah, I don't know if the buff. I think the buff form is still probably going to be a transformation because it does say Master Roshi at full power is a power type character, right? So I'm not sure if characters just change types when they transform, because Broly uh, is also, I mean, Broly's probably gonna be a power type in all forms, let's be honest. But Super Trunks, I imagine, wouldn't be a power type in his first form, um, in his base form and his first form, because he don't attack Trunks. I guess you could say he's a, quite the powerhouse, because he did just destroy 18 and 17, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. But yes, yeah, Super Trunks, a power type that takes pride in his stamina. Unleash explosive strength for a close range, and he can also let loose a destructive smash attack. Obviously, again, Super Trunks' main benefit is his hard-hitting punches. I think that's been the case in every Dragon Ball game he's featured in. And Cell even mocks him for the fact that his punches are... I think Cell even says his punches are just stronger than his own, right? Like, Super Trunks does more damage than Cell. But he's so slow, it doesn't matter. So, um, I'm curious how much damn damage this guy's going to do in this game. Because I feel like this guy... Like, as this game comes out and gets updated and stays relevant, I feel like this guy will always be, like will be like a monster you know um and then we have uh kale with gigantic throw so this is a throwing attack she's doing here so which means someone is getting yeeted into that building and specifically it's legendary super saiyan kale it's the berserk kale the angry one the giant one not when she's controlled it um a female saiyan from universe 6 her offensive and durability are, are off the charts so there you have it a, con a confirmation that um characters are uh, characters can have really high durability without necessarily being part of a tanking type because they are power type right now, and Kale is getting uh, Kale is getting ranked for her durability. So maybe if it's well, maybe even we might see some speed type characters who are known for their defense, right? We'll see, we'll see. But here we have a big blurb about general gameplay effects, and I'm gonna I think I'll tackle this one first because people always call this call this thing that's going on down here um, UI sign. It's not UI sign. This is just key around Goku when his gear is ripped. Um, I think the same energy effect that is surrounding Goku also surrounds Vegeta in the first or second gameplay trailer where uh, Vegeta deflects Goku's Kamehameha. I'm very sure. In fact, I'll play the clip on the screen. 
um, if, if I'm correct or not. But you, this always happens when you deflect attack. It's not you, I signed Goku. Let's all calm down. Cool. So, deflect special attacks like a Kamehameha, then launch an attack on your start of the opponents. So, I think after you deflect enemies, there is a brief window where you get some free actions. Because even in the trailer where Vegeta deflects the Kamehameha, you can actually see that... Um, you can actually see that here, uh, like, time slows down a tiny bit, meaning that there's probably an instance there we could have done an attack. And, um... Then we have a new option in, uh... Mid-range combat, closing on your opponents. So this is something we couldn't do before. You can just Assault Vanish straight up to people. Now, there was similar Vanish effects in the Tenkaichi games where you could spam Vanish to, like... I mean, you have to be in max power mode to do that, but you could, like, spam Vanish, which made your max power mode run out faster. But it would make you close the distance much quicker on an enemy. It seems now we have an actual Assault Vanish, just like in Dragon Ball Universe 2, where you can use a resource to just go right to your enemy if you want. Um, which is kind of cool, I guess. It, it, it definitely prevents people just running away from you and zoning the whole damn fight, so that's, that's, that's kind of awesome. And there's also the ability to turn the tides of the match. There's Revenge Counter, which is a counter you can immediately use after being knocked away, throw off your opponent's pace, and then go on the offensive. Now, Tenkaichi 3 didn't have this. This is also a new move. Um... In Tenkaichi 3, if you got knocked back, you basically just had to react low, get good. You just had to dodge the uh, the incoming uh, charge attack. Because if you get put in a Dragon Smash, you'll get followed up into another Dragon Smash, and another Smash, and another Smash, or a Vanish attack. And then the last hit that comes at the end, right? Um, but it seems now, while you're being knocked back, you can throw the enemy's timing off. Because people do charge the attacks up to a certain amount, right? Just to make sure that's even harder to react to the, to the Smash attack. Or because they just want more damage while they use a Smash attack on you. But with Revenge Counter, you could just immediately say no. You have to hit me with a light attack right now and not continue your combo. Or you're going to get hit with one of these or something like that, right? So that's pretty interesting. That's very interesting. Um, I, I can't wait to see how that looks uh, in gameplay. But it also says, yeah, enhance your attacks and your, uh, and your defense and enjoy high-level battles with these new actions. So yeah, an introduction to the new actions in Sparking Zero. Pretty damn cool. Um... The power section was uh, quite uh, long, for lack of a better word, but we also have the speed section, which, just like uh, the speed itself, is going to be over quite quickly, because it's really just talking about certain characters' moves. So, over here we have the speed section, where we get two playable, two, like, no, new playable characters in the volume 2 of power versus speed, a gathering of warriors of power and speed, there are characters from DBS as well here, the lightning, yeah, faster than lightning, blah, blah, blah. Power fighters that can destroy everything in their path and speed fighters who can do whatever they want. Alright. While you may not be as strong or as durable as all the, as characters of the power type, all of your actions are much faster and you'll be able to move for longer periods thanks to your low key consumption. So, movement in this game will be also heavily tied to key. I guess kind of like, um... No, Tenkechi 3 was just really quick, right? You didn't even have to use the, uh, the, like, the, the boost feature to get to enemies all the time. You, the gameplay was just really fast in general. So, I'm curious. I'm curious if the core gameplay is going to be slower or if it's going to be faster, which is why you would want to use your key to catch people because everyone moves faster now. So, we'll see. We'll see. Um, here, the Assassin of Universe 6. Use his time skip to close the distance and overcome your opponents. Uh, it does say that this move here is time prison. I'm not sure if that's a mistranslation because this is clearly not time prison. He's using his fist here and time prison is a, at least a, an open palmer move. No, I should say this. When hit punches you, he puts you in time prison, but I don't think it had the, the usual time skip glass breaking effect that the rest of his moves do. So maybe this is a mistranslation, or maybe this is actually him using time prison, because time prison is initiated by a punch, and then the follow-up move he uses is a key blast, at least in the anime, but he never got to connect it, so we'll never see. But I'm curious if this is actual real time prison, or time prison ends up in the game at all. I'm curious what, how you guys think it might work, because that, that is very interesting to me. Um... Afterwards, we have uh, the purple comet attack. This is a super attack that Berta has, and Jice, I believe. They both have this attack where the other one jumps in. I think it's the ultimate attack. At least it was the ultimate attack at Tenkaichi, but yeah. Uh, Jice is also a speed-based warrior. They didn't even say Berta, just Jice. Okay. A speed-based warrior with amazing key attacks, long-ranged special attacks, and the combinations with Berta will overwhelm any foe. See, I'm sure Berta is also a speed type, obviously, right? Uh, he's down here, for God's sake, so he's, he's a speed type. But yeah, uh, they're both speed types. And I think if you have them probably on the same team, that confirms that tag team attacks exist. Maybe. Who knows? I'm kind of hoping... I mean, it's probably... You like to be honest, it's probably the ultimate attack. Because in your other games, they, they also jumped in for the other's attacks. 
But I really do hope that tag team attacks are in the game because I would like to see stuff like uh, like Goku and Vegeta's uh, Gallic Kamehameha that they do against DBS Broly, right? You know, Vegeta's weird uh, yellow Gallic gun and Goku's uh, Kamehameha that they use against Super Saiyan Broly and uh, DBS Broly. I, I don't know. I just want to see that. But yeah, um, here we get told that Vegeta has 13 character additions and Goku has 11 character additions. Now, let me just quickly pull up um, the, spec the Spocking Zero, like, official page. I am very sure in this official page that, let's see. So, they said uh, we had 13 Vegetas and 11 Goku. So, let's see the Goku. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah. So 13 um, Goku, uh, 13 Vegetas and 11 Gokus have been revealed so far. So when they say uh, about the variations, we are talking about the amount that have been revealed right now. Because obviously, we haven't seen Ultra Instinct Goku yet. We haven't seen Evolution Blue Vegeta yet. There's quite a few forms are missing. So yeah. Um, and yeah, with some of the wildest character choices present, Dragon Ball fans won't believe the types of fighters included. Uh, battle alongside your favorite, your personal favorites, as well as your dream and matchups and to make it a reality. And yeah, that's a thing. That's another reason why Tenkaichi games are so insane, right? You could literally just do any matchup you wanted. Like, dream matches. Any any characters you wanted to see fight each other, you could just do it. Like, CPU battles in this game are still going to go hard. Like, just watching CPUs fight each other on the highest difficulty is still going to go hard. Fighting highest difficulty CPUs as players is going to go hard. Team fights are going to go hard. Restriction battles where you can only bring a certain amount of characters based on their power is going to go hard. There's just so many things about this game that are going to be so goddamn cool. But that's if they get it right. Right? We just have to hope that this one doesn't turn out like Dragon Ball Fighters roll back uh, any part of Xenoverse 2. You know what I mean? But uh, I, I, you know, I'm gonna give them the benefit that I have faith with this one. So we also have the Dispo confirmation with Justice Kick. He's the Blitz Captain of the Pride Troopers that protect Universe 11 and super maximum light speed mode allows him to achieve unbelievable speeds. And Kakunsa, because Kakunsa, again, just like Bogamo, is kind of an irrelevant character. If anything, Kakunsa is less relevant than Bogamo. Bogamo is at least the main antagonistic force for, I think, Universe 9. Kakunsa is just one of Rebrian's friends in Universe 2. And yeah, she, she has one episode where she fights 17, I believe, and that's all of her screen time. But to put such emphasis on her and give her a, a shot means that most likely every character that is in Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball, and Super is going to be uh, in Sparking Zero. Maybe not Dragon Ball, because Dragon Ball, uh, unfortunately, is the least popular part, despite the fact that I think Dragon Ball is on par with Z when it comes to how good it is. Um, but yeah, uh, Kakunta, a member of the Maiden Squad from Universe 2. She has a wild combat style using her claws and fangs. Her special move and strategy is focused on closing the gap between your opponents. And Kakunta, I now that I mention it, Kakunta might be like an insane character because there are certain characters who just kind of don't use key blasts at all. So they're going to be really good up close. Um, and she's she's one of them. I don't remember her using key blasts. I remember her going crazy with the claws though. Until 17, you know, he kind of locked in and it was over. But um, yeah, Berta. Oh, he's the fastest in the universe, blah, blah, blah. Look. They say Berta specializes with his Astro Image technique to allow him to easily evade. But Astro Image is a thing that pretty much every character in Dragon Ball does. And then they think Berta is the one who gets bullied by Astro Images <laughs> in, his, in his fight against Goku. So Berta, they even make a joke about Berta being the fastest in the universe. It's in quotes. So that, that's kind of funny. Um, maybe we'll actually see unique interactions again, just like in the Tenkaichi series, right? What do you guys think? Berta versus Dispo? Where Berta talks about, I'm the fastest in the universe, you can't beat me. And Dispo's like, wait a minute, are you, are you, are you joking right now? Do you not know who I am? Do you not know I'm the Super Sonic Warrior? Like, there's gonna be cool character interactions in this game. And I really, really, really can't wait for it, right? Pride Troopers versus Ginyu Force is another one. That might be a reason why they have Jason Berta beating up on Topo, right? Pride Troopers versus Ginyu Force could be a very interesting one to see. They'll probably... Oh, man, I can't imagine a unique intro in this game. Please don't fumble this one. I'm begging you, Bandai. Please don't fumble this one. Do, do all the fanfiction unique intros you want. I want to I wanna see Gudo and Hit interact, man. Come on. Oh, I want to see Z Broly and Super Broly say things to each other. Like, God. All right. I don't want to waste you guys' time. This is a good place to end the video. But let me know in the comment section what you guys would like to see because there are so many cool things that this game has potential for, man. I can't wait to see at least one core gameplay trailer with the, with the heads-up display, the health bars, the stamina bar, the key bar, where, whatever bars we have to follow, right, um, in this game. I can't wait to see how the heads-up display looks, the super attack list looks. I want to see how many attacks characters have. Damn it! I want to see these things, but we have to wait until a gameplay trailer. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you enjoyed the novice again, please leave a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe to greatly support the channel. And leave a comment down below as to what you'd like to see next, fellas. Love you all. Hope you enjoyed. And I will see you all next time. Take care and uh, peace. Man, this game's roster is going to be phenomenal. And I cannot wait.
to see everything. 